Welcome to Matos 100 Interview Series on location here at the Vancouver Resource Investment Conference 2024. So I'm glad that we have a special guest here with me, the special speaker that we invited last year to our conference as well, Mr. Lobo Tigre. Lobo, how are you doing today? Happy to be here. Great. So finally meet in person. We we'll talk on Zoom all the time. So. Let's just start off by talking about the, the overall market sentiments. I, I, I have a sense in the last few weeks, in the beginning of the year, people talk about recession fears and that amongst uh, the interest rate sort of at the peak right now. So, so what, what do you think of all of these uh, sort of, does this create a lot of market uncertainty to overall? Well, different levels, because we're here at the resource show and for resource investors, the implications are different from the broader markets. But, but let's pull back to the bigger picture because one, there's a lot of noise out there about no recession. And it's driving me crazy. The mainstream media, they're talking about soft landing, soft landing, as though that means no recession, but it's not true. A soft landing means a mild recession. And it, you know, it, it makes me mad because people tr say, that is the mainstream consensus, not even radicals like me. Mainstream economists are saying soft landing, which means recession. And, and the hairspray heads on TV are talking about that meaning like no recession and that people believe that and they invest that way. Like there's no danger of recession. I think that puts people's money at risk. Um, now, dialing down though for resource investors, I think the, the really key thing is, and even within our audience, there's people say, oh, well, you know, recession is great for gold, right? And it's true. Historically, that's true. But there's other people saying, oh, no, no, this recession is going to be deflationary and deflation is bad for gold. So sell all your gold stocks. <laughs> right. um, so what do we do? Well, my view is uh, we are in a recession. It will become undeniable this year. I know. Yes. Dear audience, anybody's been paying attention? I said this last year. It's the same call. I think it's been pushed out by the labor hoarding post pandemic. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, it's the same call. I just think the timing is a little bit longer. I think we'll see it this year. I do think recession will be good for gold. I don't think we're going to see a deflationary crash. And if it started looking that way, like even let's say the, the deflationistas are right, the moment that happens, I think the powers that be in Washington, the Fed pivots much bigger than we've seen. I think stimmy checks come from Washington, right? The powers that be are not going to allow the economy to crash. If they can do anything to stop it, no matter how stupid, or how big that makes the eventual crash farther in the future, they'll do it. So I'm not actually disagreeing with the people who are saying things look bad and they're gonna, you know, they're much worse than the mainstream believes. I actually agree with that. But my view is that the response from Washington will be so strong, you know, it will swamp that. And and if there's enough money out there, it's not only good for gold, it's actually good for the whole commodity sector. You know, they, they throw enough money at it, then you'll see inflation really hit all commodities prices. So just to follow up what your statement earlier, you said gold is going to do well this year. How about gold stocks? So gold stocks seems to be the, a bit of a disconnect, even though the gold is at all time high. Will, 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 you, will you see a, a good uh, market coming back for the gold, gold stocks? Nobody knows the future, but I'm absolutely betting that we will. I, I'm, I am not only am I massively long now, I'm putting more money in the market now, specifically in gold stocks, even more than uranium. As much as I love uranium, <laughs> yeah. and you know, I did great on uranium last year. Uh, my focus right now is specifically gold stocks for the very reason that you're saying. You know, I, I like the uranium story, but the uranium stocks, at least the better ones, they're not cheap anymore. You know, many of them are at 52 week highs or multi year highs. Uh, you know, I like it. I'm happy as a shareholder, but that, you, the idea is buy low, sell high, not buy high and hope to sell higher, right? And that's the beauty of the situation right now for gold is that you actually can buy low, right? That, that stocks are so hated. The sector seems to be like, you know, I'm fought it and I can't get up, right? You know, the stocks just start going anywhere. I think that will change. And I, I don't know if you want to get into why it's that way, but but I think that will change. And I think it'll be the gold stocks catching up to gold rather than gold falling to the gold stocks. That's I'm contrary to the conventional wisdom there. So for, I may be right, I may be wrong, but I am putting my own money in this. So you yeah. can't get better than that. <laughs> and, and you just mentioned about uranium. You did make a good call on uranium. And last year, it was the slot price was going to have a really drastic upward trend. And what, what, what's the thoughts on that coming into the new year? Are we seeing this sort of uh, 
uh, uranium price were coming back to a more uh, reasonable level, or how does how does that market uh, going to play out? There's more than two, but I see two general paths. I mean, for for one thing, we're already shot way above the incentive price. You know, I was hoping we might get to 80 bucks yeah. and then see it kind of go into a more steady growth. It's shot up to 106 last I saw, and right now the chart looks like this. <laughs> You know, clearly that's not sustainable. Not, no price can go vertical forever. There has to be, if not a correction, then at least a leveling off for a while, a breather with some consolidation. Um, and that's probably a good thing. You know, I was just saying I like gold because the gold stocks are cheap. In uranium stocks, they're not cheap. But if we see a little bit of calming of the irrational exuberance in that market, that could create a wonderful buying opportunity. So that's the good news. Now. You know, the bad news might be that it's gone way too far. It needs to correct, you know, from if it drops from 106 to 80, that's still a great price for the industry. That's more than most of the miners need to build new mines or whatever, right? But dropping from 106 to, to 80 would be a huge correction, yeah. right? You know, that's 25% or so. Uh, you know, I think there will be panic. There will be people saying, oh, it's done. It's broken. It's going down to $18 a pound or whatever. Uh, so if that happens, I think that would be a terrific buying opportunity because, no, it's not going back to 18. The, the long-term contract price, I think, has set a new higher floor under the spot price. So any overreaction in this market, I think, would be a gift. I mean, really a gift because the long-term, the supply and demand fundamentals here are, are so bullish for not just years, but probably decades to come. So I... I I'd love to see it. I've, I've taken so I've taken profits. I got to say, I've yeah. taken a lot of profits. I've, I've even completely closed out some trades that got way above what I expected. So I've got money here to put back in this marketplace. I'd love to see a correction. And if not, I'm still long. I still have a lot of uranium stocks here. And, and sorry, one more thing to put these two yellow metals together. Yeah. What I really like about this setup for this year, 2024, is so say I'm wrong about the recession and gold doesn't go anywhere. My uranium stocks will do great. You know, energy sector will boom if, if there's no recession. It's happy, happy, joy, joy. Right? That's going to be great for uranium, oil, too, all energy sector. Um, but if I'm right and there is a recession, then my gold stocks will do great. But here's the thing. Even in a recession, I don't think uranium goes back where it was. You, there is no substitute for today's nuclear power plants. And they're building more and more of them, right? You know, that supply constraint is already there and you have the world's biggest and cheapest producer saying we may not be able to produce as much as we thought right you know even in the recession case so i see the two yellow metals as hedging each other but even if it goes more lopsided in the recession side i think both of them do well hmm. so it's it's a win-win or it's a win-win-win i really <laughs> like it well, let's continue on more on the discussion about energy so one of the the energy metals in, in the sector as one of the leaders, uh, lithium has gone way down last year. You know, it dropped almost like 80% in value. So, so what's your thoughts? Is that really oversupply on the demand side? Do you think it will be in better shape this year, 2024? Well, markets are forward looking. And we come back to lithium itself. But in a way, if, if lithium is the new copper, <laughs> right? And Dr. Copper is the, <laughs> you know, the PhD in economics that tells you where the economy is going. Lithium is giving you a screaming red flag about the economy. And, and why would that happen? The prices don't just drop for no reason. If lithium prices are down, fewer people are buying it. Who's buying it? These EV makers. You know, if, if a heavily subsidized, favored, you know, market darling industry is seeing falling demand and buying less raw materials, that really tells you something about the economy, I think. All right, so, but this answers the question, too. So... I'm actually quite bullish on lithium on the other side of the recession. And I'm far from convinced that the recession has done its worst. I think it can go lower. And recessions typically last you know, a couple of years. Now, I, as we talked about earlier, I think the powers that be will throw lots of money at it. They won't let it be like that. So I, just, I don't know how long it lasts, but I absolutely, I'm not buying lithium or copper or oil and no industrial minerals until I'm sure the recession has done its worst. Now, I can't time it. I can't say, okay, here's the bottom. But at this point, the bottom looks more likely to be in front of us than behind us. So when I, when I can say, oh, I don't know for sure, but it looks more likely to be behind us, that's when I start saying, okay, maybe it's time to look at my oil, my copper, maybe lithium too. We'll see. 
yeah, you mentioned about the oil. Of course, the, we like to talk about the, the, as last question in this interview, oil. Because I, I feel like the oil space is a really complex situation here because last year we see so many geopolitical things happening in the Middle East, affecting it. But also you see the GOPAC of the world, the GOPAC plus of the world, they, they keep on doing this production cut to try to, try to, well, to they, minimize Well, they did, price. but now the Saudis yeah. cut... Yeah. I mean, that, that in my view, was a very important pivot because OPEC plus, as you say, they've been constraining supply, constraining yeah. supply, which fits into my recessionary narrative. Like, why would OPEC do that if they thought demand was going to be robust? If they feel a need to constrain supply, it's because they see weak demand. But now suddenly Saudi Arabia says, you know, yeah. it's OK. It's <laughs> right? we're, we're changing our mind. You know, you know that's that's a big eye opener. Um, do you, do, you, but, do you think they will flush it out their, their cheap oil out in the market? You know, I, I don't know. And, the then, and then on top of that, we have the geopolitics. Yeah. Right? It, it, so it's almost like, I don't want to say a fool's errand, but you could you could hire a room full of PhDs like the Fed, you know, <laughs> yeah. hundreds of them, and make your projection and forecast. And one stupid Houthi missile tomorrow on the wrong ship completely changes everything. You know, like, you know what I'm saying? The, the price could be off by 50% yeah. in a month if the wrong things happen <laughs> in the Middle East. So to calculate the price of oil to three digits next year, it's silly in that kind of environment. And who knows how that's going to go. So, so my view is rather than waste time and effort trying to calculate where it's going to be, blah, 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 I just put it in that basket of things. I like oil. And by the way, uh, you know, I like Lynn Alden's comparison of oil to being like tobacco a few decades ago. People are still smoking. People are still burning oil. But the industry became so demonized, it actually became a great contrarian investment. And the tobacco companies paid investors who were willing to go there a lot of money. Oil is like that now. The, the industry is capital constrained. Oil is still needed, right? So I think this politically correct green agenda is actually gonna make oil prices go way up. I love that. And I'm planning to invest heavily in this space but not until after the recession. So so to connect with this, like instead of calculating what the price is gonna be or all this stuff, you know, forget that. Just understand that the energy sector always gets whacked in a recession. So until that recession is off the table, like I'm wrong and team no landing is right, or it's behind us, one or the other. Until then, just hold off on the oil patch. There'll be lots of time to make money with less risk when it's obviously time to get in. Mm, really interesting thought. Thank you, Lobo, for sharing your insights with us here today at the VRIC. Thank you for your time. Yep, thank you. Thank you.